serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world. This is the Show Me Sports Network. The following is an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and is a high-fidelity, all-digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyright by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. This is the local high school basketball pregame show on the exclusive broadcast home, the Show Me Sports Network. We'll recall last game's highlights and set the stage for tip-off, all while we get set to bring you the exciting play-by-play action of local high school basketball. The best broadcast coverage in mid-Missouri is on the air as Blake Gasaway and the crew are ready in the broadcast booth. Exclusive pregame coverage of local high school basketball is brought to you by Avon with Michelle Carty, Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Eddie Goodell Society, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC, Kathy Rush, Remax Realty, Last Sentinel Firearms, River Oak Christian Academy, Sawdust Studios, Law Offices of Russ Swanigan, Southwest Dental Care, and State Tech of Missouri. The excitement is building in the stands and the tension is rising courtside as tip-off is just around the corner. You're listening to exclusive coverage of local high school basketball on the Show Me Sports Network. Now here's the voice of the Show Me Sports Network, Blake Gasaway. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. Blake Gazaway here with you as we are set to bring you day two of action. At least day two of the girls' bracket. It's day three all in all from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament. As we're bringing you exclusive coverage here on the Show Me Sports Network. And Blake Gazaway here with you having the call so far all tournament long. As uh, we're just a little under five minutes away from our game one of two this evening as the Hallsville Lady Indians, the number one seed for the tournament, taking on the number four seed. That's the Osage County or Lynn Lady Wildcats. They are number four. Sorry. uh, Yeah, number four in the tournament. These two teams were in action on Monday. Hallsville beat... Father Tolton, 64-41, to move on to the uh, game today for the Lady Wildcats. They beat Harrisburg. That was an upset, the number five seed upsetting the number four seed. As that put them through to the game today for Harrisburg, they are getting ready to be underway at 6 o'clock over at the middle school as they are playing Father Tolton. And then for game two, our nightcap, it'll be number two, Mexico, playing host to Centralia, the number three seed. So it's a two versus three seed as that matchup will be following our game here. It'll be uh, right about uh, 7.30 or somewhere in that ballpark to get that game tipped off. And then the nightcap over at the middle school, number six, Fulton will be hosting number seven Fayette as they play in the consolation bracket over at the middle school. So two games here on tap. As Mexico won Monday night over Fayette 43-18. And for Centralia, they beat Fulton by a final of 60-15. to That's how those two teams got to where they'll be at For game two of our broadcast here this evening, again, the winners from tonight's game, they will play in the championship game. That'll be winner of both games taking on each other. That's set for 4 o'clock on Saturday. And for the losers of today's game, they will play in the third place game. That will be at 1 o'clock here at the high school gym. And for the winners over at the middle school, they will play in the consolation bracket as they will be playing for fifth place. That'll be set for Friday as it's a 6 o'clock tip-off and the seventh place game will follow at 7.30. Again, the losers of those two games at the middle school will be playing 
in that seventh place game. So lots of basketball still headed your way. More games tomorrow. As tomorrow, we'll switch back to the boys' side of the bracket. Again, a little different tournament here because there wasn't quite enough boys' teams to fill the bracket. So the handful of teams that are playing will see two games apiece. Tomorrow, it'll be Harrisburg versus Centralia and then Fayette versus Hallsville. First game, Harrisburg and Centralia from here at the high school gym. That's set for a 6 o'clock tip. And for the fayette Hallsville game, that's set for 7.30. Can both those games will be played here at the high school gym. Hopefully you enjoy tonight's broadcast here on the Show Me Sports Network. Do have one thing to ask you, if you would, go over to our Facebook page. Just search for the Show Me Sports Network. You'll find us there. Be sure and like our page. We appreciate the support. You can share our page. You can like it. We appreciate the support of the Show Me Sports Network. We'll have the national anthem coming up here in just one moment as we'll take a quick break and be back and get you set for your starting lineups as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. Attention Indians fans, here's your chance to help the student-athletes of Hallsville by becoming a member of the Hallsville Athletic Boosters. Your gifts help provide all Hallsville athletes with a safe and positive experience while attending our school district and also help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Hallsville Athletic Boosters this season for as little as $25. Membership is open to everyone. Interested in joining? Look them up on Facebook by searching Hallsville Athletic Boosters or email them at HallsvilleAthleticBoosters at gmail.com. Let's go Indians! Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format, high powered lasers. With some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732 to find out more on custom laser engraving llc a veteran owned business at the boone county journal we're with you all the way we know that you're more than just a subscriber you're an employer you're a parent you're a neighbor most importantly you're a community member it's our goal to provide you with the latest news sports opinions obituaries classifieds and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. Taking a look at the starting lineups for the Lady Wildcats. They will start a 5'7 freshman in Kiana Hotstetler. A 5'8 freshman in Vivian Baker. A 5'8 junior, Ashara Hotstetler. A 5'5 freshman in Emma Monette. And a 5'6 junior in Autumn Baker. Wild Lady Wildcats under head coach by Brandy Moore. Taking a look at the Lady Indians starting lineups. They will start a 5'5 senior in Kristen Jones, a 5'5 junior Avery Edding. They will start a 5'7 freshman Rachel Hargis. They will start a 5'10 senior Ashlyn Huff and a 6' foot senior in Haley Hagen to round out their starting 5'4. Lady Indians, they're under head coach Matt Heat. As Huff meets in center circle, she'll shake hands with Yana Hotstetler. Looks like they're just about ready. I believe one of the Referees forgot her whistle, so she had to run back and get her whistle. So now she says she's going to be ready. The 
Ball will be thrown in the air momentarily. Tip is going to be controlled by the Lady Indians of Hallsville as they will go right to left on your Show Me Sports Network app or media center, however you're choosing to listen. There's a quick shot up along the baseline by Edding. Good. And that's our first lead at 2 to nothing quickly for the Lady Indians. Lady Wildcats will have the basketball as Kiana Hutstetler will have it on the far side. Was trapped for a moment, got it to Baker. She'll get it back as they go left to right on your Show Me Sports Network app or media center. There's a three up by Ashara Hotsteller. That one no good. Rebound comes down to Jones. She'll give a cross-court pass over to Hargis. Her three up on the iron, no good. Rebound will be taken by the Lady Wildcats. Again, 2 nothing lead here for the Lady Indians as Hotstetler has it for a moment. That's Kiana. She'll get it back straight away, give it near side to Monette. Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds, so they will inbound it. It'll stay with the Lady Wildcats. Again, 2 to nothing score as we played 55 seconds here in this opening period. There's a three up from the left wing. That one no good. That by Hotstetler, and rebound comes down to the Lady Indians. They'll get it to Jones. She'll fire a jumper off no good from the near side. Rebound goes the other way for the Lady Wildcats. As with it is Kiana Hotstetler. She'll give it to Ashara. There's a shot up from the free throw line. That one no good by Baker. Rebound to the Lady Indians as clock finally started. There's a shot up no good. By the Lady Indians, just having to catch that, wasn't running, so had a little, little bit of free play there, and there's going to be a whistle and a backcourt violation as Hotstetler had it poked out, got it in front court, but stepped and took the ball into backcourt, so we'll go back to the Lady Indians, who do lead two to nothing here, as down low looking for Hagen, she'll get it, try to drive in. And she traveled as she mishandled the ball, had to go back and get it, tried to go up with it, but she shuffled her feet. So it will go back to the Lady Wildcats. As it's a 2 nothing ball game, as there's going to be a steal, Jones is going to take it the other way. She'll go coast to coast, stop, miss the shot, and there's a foul on the rebound. Huff will pick up her first team first. Well, that's her first foul, so that comes first foul of the game. Comes with 6.32 left here in this opening period. Inbound for the Lady Wildcats. As Hotstetler will dribble it across the timeline, working on the far side. Now there's going to be a steal going the other way. Shot up is good. That one by Edding. She's got all four points. Lady Indians lead by four at four to nothing. With it is Baker. She'll give it off. For a moment, driving in, right-hander up, no good by Vivian Baker. However, there'll be a foul called. That foul is going to be called on Hagen, her first, team second. She picks up her first foul. First free throw up, good. Vivian Baker at the free throw line. The freshman has her first points. She'll be looking for point number two. Three-point lead here. Second free throw up. That one also good. So she makes both of those. That lead cut down to two at four to two. With it is Edding. She'll give it to Jones. Three-pointer up. No good. Rebound comes down into the hands of Ashara Hotstetler. She'll put the right-hand dribble to work along the sidelines here. Trying to tie her up is the defense for the Lady Indians. She'll give a pass off, but right into the hands of Rough. She'll give it off to Jones. She drives in, and she'll be fouled. That foul on Kiana Hotstetler, her first team first. So it is a two to nothing lead. Sorry, a two point lead at four to two in favor of the Lady Indians. Jones will be at the free throw line. First free throw up. Good. Well, it's five to two. She's got a second free throw coming. That one up. That one also good. So she's got her first two points of the game. As that lead back to four at six to two. Deanna Hotstetler has it. Gives a pass off to Autumn Baker. There's a three. That one in by Ashara Hotstetler. 
It's a one-point game at 6-5. to five. And there's going to be a pass that's going to be thrown out of bounds for the Lady Indians. We'll go back to the Lady Wildcats as they trail by one at 6-5. to five. Lady Indians looking to defend their title from last year's tournament here. They were the champions of that, looking to have a repeat performance. There's a shot from the far side, that one by Baker. That blocked, however, nobody wants the rebound. It finally goes out of bounds off of one of the Lady Wildcats. But off Baker will go back the other way for the Lady Indians of Hallsville as they lead by one, six to five. Pass over to the far side to Jones. Now near side with it will be Hargis. She'll give it off to Edding. Now Jones, right wing with it, is Huff. Her shot no good. Rebound comes down for the Lady Wildcats into the hands of Baker ever she traveled with it. So she will turn it back over. Well, substitutions, we'll get those here in one second. So inbound for the uh, Lady Indians knocked out of bounds by Hotstetler, so we'll stay with the Lady Indians. Quintana will pull the trigger on the inbound. 5'4", senior, Chloe Quintana has checked in. There's a three from the near side, up and good. That one by Edding, she's got seven points. That lead extended to four at nine to five. Double teamed over here on the near side is Baker. There's gonna be a ball taken away. Edding will drive in, shot up good, high off the glass. She's got two more points. She's got nine. It's now 11 to five. Little 5-0 run right now for the Lady Indians. Yana Hotstetler will have it. She'll give a left-hand pass to Autumn Baker. Now driving in Ashara. Hotstetler ball is going to be blocked on her shot. Jones gets it. She's going to take it in, lay it up, missed it. Rebound comes down in the hands of Hargis. Edding goes up with it. She's got another bucket. Nice assist there by Hargis. And it's now 13-5 in favor of the Lady Indians. And a timeout called. We'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage. It's a full timeout as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society. Jefferson City Chapter 10. Doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie! Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled, offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your your last line of defense. It'll be an inbound for the Lady Wildcats. However, they get it poked out as the Lady Indians go the other way. There's a three from Jones. She cannot get it to fall. Hargis gets the rebound. That one won't go. Quintana goes back up. That one falls in. She's got her first bucket of the ball game, and it's now a 10-point lead at 15-5. to five. Jones had 19 points in the ball game on Monday. She's just been held to a couple of points by the way of the free throw line here. But we're at three and a half to go here in this opening period. With it is Deanna Hotstetler. She gives it off. There's a travel by Monette. So we'll go back to the Lady Indians. They do lead by 10 at 15 to 5. 325 left to go here in this Opening period of action, game one of two tonight. Quintana will get the inbound pass. She'll give it off to Edding. Edding gives it back to Quintana, back to Edding here on the near side. She'll give a bounce pass in the front court. That is to uh, Natalie Mitchell. Ball knocked back to her. She gets it off to Edding. Her shot blocked. Goes into the hands of Hargis. Her shot up missed everything. Edding fighting for the rebound. 
They're going to say last touch by Hotstetler. They said a 5'9 junior, Natalie Mitchell, has checked into the ball game. As inbound for the Lady Indians, they'll throw it in the backcourt as Edding had to go out and get it. Now she'll walk it across the timeline, kick it for Quintana. Right wing with it is Hargis. She'll try to drive along the baseline and a whistle and a foul. And that's going to be number one on Ashara Hotstetler, her first team second. So we'll be an inbound here. Hopefully, we said you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. His pass is going to be knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with the Lady Indians on their end of the court underneath their own bucket. So Hargis will pull the trigger on the inbound. She'll get it into the right wing to Quintana. Her three up. Good. She's got five points. It's now an 18 to 5 lead in favor of the Lady Indians. 2.45 and counting left here in this first period. Ashara Hotstetler has it, gives it near side to Kiana Hotstetler. There's a shot up, blocked and out of bounds. Monette tried to fire up a short jumper. That one blocked by Jones, goes out of bounds. But it will stay with the Lady Wildcats. And this is the number one seed versus the number five seed. So inbound forthcoming for the Lady Wildcats as they'll get it in out front to Hotstetler. That's Ashara. She'll put the dribble, pick it up, give it down low, turn around jumper, couldn't fall in by Vivian Baker, and it's going to be off the hands of Autumn Baker, so we'll go back to the Lady Indians who lead 18-5. to five. So inbound in for Jones. She'll give it off to Quintana. She'll pick it up, needs some help, almost threw it away, but got it in the hands of Hargis. She'll give it off to Ruff, and the ball is going to be taken away. Lady Wildcats will go the other way with it as they trail by 13. Hot Settler drives in from the far side, nothing doing there. There's going to be a pass knocked out by Jones, taken by Hagen. She'll give it off to Quintana. Jones has a right wing. Step over, take the three. Good. She's got five points. And it's 21 to 5. Nice job of her part to get the defender in the air. Step over, take it. Baker will have it. That's Autumn Baker. And there's a whistle and a reach in foul on Jones. That's her first for the senior team, third. Checking out will be Quintana. Checking in is freshman 5'5 five, five freshman, Hannah Hackman. Hackman checks in. Inbound will be for. The uh, Lady Indians, there's another three by Jones. That one up and that one also good. She's got back-to-back -back trays, and it's almost a 20-point lead now. A minute and a half to go. Hotstetler drives in, lays it up underhanded, lays it in. She's got her first bucket of the game, and it's 24-7 to in favor of Hallsville. Lady Indians have the basketball. Hargis will have it. She'll give a bounce pass far side off to Thienen, and that shot is fouled as Hotstetler Ashara picks up her second team third at the free throw line will be Huff, and that one is good. She's got a second one coming. Second one will be forthcoming. A minute nine left here in the First period, that one up, that one also good. So she's got two points. It makes it a 26-7 ball game. As with it is Baker. She'll pick up her dribble, gives it off to Kiana Hotstetler. Down low, shot up by Blavelt. Is no good, and there's a whistle and a foul. That one called on Monette, her first, team fourth. So it belong to the Lady Indians. They lead 26-7. As we have 58.4 seconds left. As inbound will go in. Hargis will get it back. She'll kick it to the near side to Thienen. That goes out of bounds. And we'll go back to Lady Wildcats. So 
Inbound will go into backcourt to Blue Belt. She'll have a screen set and a whistle, and she traveled with it, was about to get stuck among the trees in backcourt, and she ends up walking with it. So Lady Indians have the basketball and the lead. Hargis will have it down low, backing her way in as Hagen turn around, shot up good. Her first bucket of the game. It's now a 21-point lead at 28-7. to There's a pass quickly in the front court to Vivian Baker. She'll give it off to Kiana Hotstetler. She'll put the right-hand dribble down near side, working her way in, fired it from the low post up good. She's got four points. It's a 28-9 score. A little pressure put on here by the Lady Wildcats, but no problem breaking it is Hallsville. There's a left-hander up good by Hargis. Sorry, Hagen, rather. She's got four points. It's back 30 to nine. There's a shot on the other end. That one up no good by Monette. And a whistle. And we'll have a foul. We'll see who they call that on. 1.2 seconds left. That one called on Autumn Baker, her first team fifth. Rebound will go in, and Hallsville does not get a shot off. But after the first period of play, they lead 30 to nine. We're going to take a quick break and be back and get you set for the second period of action as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carti. Live beautifully with Avon. As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Swinigan and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Swanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you've earned. The law offices of Russ Swanigan. On the inbound to the Lady Wildcats, they throw it away, though. Edding has it, gives it off to Jones. Her shot up and good. She's got double digits with 10 points already. It's now a 32-9 score. Lady Wildcats will have the basketball, and there's the reach-in foul. That's number two on Jones. Team foul number four, so she's got two fouls here in this first half of action. 7.45 left to go here before halftime. Again, the Lady Indians leading 32-9. Deanna Hotstetler will get the inbound pass. She'll do a dribble behind the back to work it to the far side. Now cut it here on the near side. She'll give a wraparound pass. To Monette, free throw line with it is Baker trying to drive in, but she walked with it. She turns around and is stunned and says, who me? But that will turn it back over to the Lady Indians who lead 32 to nine. And winner of this game matches up with the winner of game two in the championship game on Saturday. Jones had it for a moment, heading straight away. She'll kick it on the far side, had it was Lucas Edding. There's a shot up, and that one no good by Lucas. That was a three, you got offline. So rebound comes down for the Lady Wildcats. Down low with it is Baker. She can't do anything with it, and she'll travel again. So back-to-back times that Lady Wildcats have had the basketball. They have turned it over. Monette checks in. Also, 5'3 freshman Kylie Peters checks in for the Lady Wildcats. There's a pass to Therkel. Now Jones fires up a three from the near side. That no good. Lucas gets the rebound, gives it back to Therkel. Edding's three up. Good. Sorry, that's... Yeah, that is Edding. So she's got 14 points, and it makes it 35-9. to 5'10 senior Madison Therkel has checked in. Ball knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with the Lady Wildcats. 637 left to go here in this first half. Inbound goes into Hotstetler. That's Kiana. Bounce pass to Peters here on the near side. 
She'll have to get rid of it and just threw it away. Ball was into the hands of Edding and then goes off of the hands of Hotstetler, so it goes back to the Lady Indians. Jones will have it, give a cross-court pass to Lucas. She thought about the three, put her dribble down instead, and we have a whistle and a reach-in foul. That one called on Macy Blavelt, her first team six. So the next foul for the Lady Wildcats will be in the bonus. Inbound will go into the hands of Edding. That pass will be knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with the Lady Indians underneath their own bucket. They lead 35-9. to nine. Inbound goes in to Mitchell. She's checked in. Jones with it. Gives it to Lucas. Back to Jones. Head and shoulder fake. She'll step in. Running one-hander in the paint. No good. Rebound going to be on the court. Will be saved for the Lady Indians. There's a three by Lucas near side. That one too strong. Rebound taken by Hotstetler. She'll go the other way with it. And a whistle. And a foul call. That away from the ball. That one on Lavelle, her second, team seventh, so an offensive foul. No shots here. 5-49 left in this first half. Again, 35-9 score in favor of Lady Indians. Jones will have it. She'll give it to Edding. She'll work it here on the near side, looking in the paint. Couldn't get a good handle on it was Mitchell. There's a shot up. That one no good by Thurkeld. Rebound, though, comes down to Mitchell. They'll reset the offense. There's Edding with another three. That one offline. Again, rebound is going to be taken for a moment by Mitchell and then tied up. Possession arrow points towards the Lady Indians as Quintana checks in. Also checking in is Hargis. Checking out is Lucas and Eddie. So inbound for the Lady Indians underneath their own bucket. Had to climb the ladder was Mitchell. She'll get it looking down low. And ball's going to be out of bounds, trying to get it down low to Hargis and overshot the mark, knocked out by one of the Lady Wildcats. So inbound here in the left wing, Quintana three up, no good. Rebound offensive, put back that one up and good. That one by Hargis, she's got her first points of the game, makes it a 37-9 score. That shot up, that one no good. Rebound comes down into the hands of Hargis as bounce pass to the far side to Jones. She'll have it right wing, give it off to Mitchell. She drives in her shot too strong. Offensive put back, that one not there by Hargis. Rebound will be saved again by the Lady Indians as Jones will have it out front. They have the score rung on the scoreboard. They say 38-9, to nine. it's actually 37. There's a shot up by Quintana, no good. Rebound will be knocked out of bounds. Score should be 38 to 9. I think they counted that shot as a two or a three rather than a two. So with it will be. Baker, that's Vivian Baker out front, had it poked out, got it back. And a, a foul called as that one will be number two on Hagen. So Hagen picks up her second, just the team fifth foul. So 4.16 left to go here in this first half. As there's a shot, that's going to be wide of the mark. Will come down to Jones, who gives a pass off into front court to Quintana. She'll have it on the far side. Bounce pass down low to Hagen, trying to back her way in. Free throw line. Ruff had it. Couldn't get it to fall. Rebound will be tied up. As Baker and Ruff tying up there on that rebound. Will go back to the Lady Wildcats as they trail 37-9. to There's a long three by Hotstetler. That one no good. One-handed rebound comes down to Hagen. And she'll give an outlet pass off to Quintana across the timeline. Jones has it here on the near side in the left wing. Now she'll work it more straight away behind the leg, uh, behind the, between the legs dribble. There we go. Quintana gets it, gives it off to Ruff. She drives in. Right-hander falls in. She's got four points. And it makes it 39-9, a 30-point lead. 
There's going to be a pass that's going to be stolen. Knocked into backcourt. Quintana will get it in the left wing. She'll leave it for Jones. Three forthcoming. No good. Rebound is going to be taken by Ruff and taken out of her hands. Quickly on the other end. That's Ashara Hotstedler. She throws it up. Got it to fall in. She's got five points. 42-11 the score. As we're under three to play here, there's a ball that's going to be knocked down off of Hotstetler, so we'll stay with Hallsville. They will have it on their end of the court. So inbound will go into backcourt as Edding will get it in backcourt. There's a shot up. She had to go the long way around, but got it to fall. She's got 16 in the game. It's 41 to 11. Cross court pass almost too tall for Hotstetler, but she's able to get it straight away. Now she'll give a pass here on the near side to Monette down low. Shot up by Baker. No good. Rebound will finally be controlled by Kaylee Eddy. She'll give it off to Edding. She drives in right-hander up. No good. Rebound poked around. Will be taken by Hannah Hackman, who will give it off to uh, Hotstetler. Her three up. No good. And a whistle and a foul. We'll see who they call that on. That one called on Eddie. Her first, team sixth. So we'll be an inbound. 2-0-2 left here. In this first half of action, Hotstedler will have it. That's Ashara. She drives in. Nice move to lean in, lay it up, got it in. She's got seven. That lead cut down a little bit, but still sizable at 42-13. to 13. As with it is Hargis out by center circle. She'll give it off to Edding. She'll leave it in the left wing for Hargis. She drives in. Her shot was partially blocked. Goes into the hands of Vivian Baker. She'll give a ba- baseball pass, far side up, driving in. Hot Stetler has two more. She's got nine points in the game as it's now 42 to 16. As with it is Edding on the far side trying to uh, go along the baseline. She'll give it off to Hagen. Her shot too strong on the iron. Rebound will be poked out in the hands of, of Edding. That shot no good. There's a uh, second effort shot. That one also no good by Eddie. That one up and that one good finally. Fourth time's a charm by Huff as it's now 44-15 under a minute to go. Baker will have it out on the free throw line. Wrap around pass looking down low. Turnaround shot up no good by Vivian Baker. Rebound comes down the other way. Lady Indians have it. Edding with it. She'll kick it far side for Hargis. Her three up, no good. Rebound comes down to Eddie. She'll have a near side straight away. There's a three up. That one no good by Edding. Hagen offensive putback is good. She's got six points. She puts the southpaw shot up off the glass and in. It's 46 to 15. As with it, he is Baker. She'll try to drive in, and she's fouled. That one on Hagen. That's her third, team seventh. 13.3 13.3 seconds left to go here in this first half. Actually, they call that on Huff, her second. So first free throw up and good by Baker, her first points of the game. Second free throw, that one also up and good, so she makes both of those as it's now a 46-17 score, 13 seconds as clock continuing to wind down here in this first half of action. As with it is Edding. She'll give it off. Hagen shot up from the low post. Good. She's got back-to-back buckets, and that'll take us to the end of the first half of play as after the first half of action at halftime, it's 48-17 in favor of the Lady Indians over the Lady Wildcats. We'll take a break here and be back and get into your halftime scoring summary as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. 
career in technical education at State Fair Community College can prepare you for an in-demand, high-paying manufacturing career in one year or less. Professional and skilled certificates are available in industrial maintenance, welding, construction management, automotive tech, agriculture, and more. At State Fair Community College, technical programs are NC3 certified, which means you're trained to the current industry standards companies are looking for. Visit sfccmo.edu slash techjobs to learn more. Creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading, professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at Sawdust Sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. There are things in life you should always do. Always say please and thank you. Always get a good night's rest and always take care of your teeth. After all, you're only given one set of permanent teeth to last you a lifetime. Southwest Dental Care is always the place to go for the highest quality dental care. They offer comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry services for all patients of all ages. Their experienced and compassionate team is there to help you achieve lifelong oral health and a stunning smile. To find out more about Southwest Dental Care, call them at 573 Six three four four nine zero nine, or visit southwestdentalcarejc.com. To get the best smile in town, you mustache to Southwest Dental Care. We are state tech. We are hands-on education. When you choose the number one two-year college in the country, you know you will be ready for your career. That's why at State Tech, we say... From the classroom to your career, we are the employer's choice. We are State Tech. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions both teams still in the locker room going over their halftime adjustments getting set for the second half as the uh, nightcap of our double header both teams out getting warmed up here at halftime that'll be number two mexico the lady bulldogs Taking on the number three seed in the Centralia Panthers as that game two of two here this evening. In this game, it's been all Hallsville as they have led wire to wire so far. Lady Indians lead the Osage County Lynn Lady Wildcats by a score of 48 to 17 here. And it's taking a look at your first half scoring summary for the Lady Indians leading all scores, junior. Avery Edding has 16 points. 10 points put in by senior Kristen Jones. 8 points put in by senior Haley Hagen. 6 points put in by senior Ashlyn Huff. And 2 points put in by freshman Rachel Hargis to round out their scoring. Taking a look at the scoring for the Lady Wildcats. Hey, good news. They fixed the score. I thought it was 47 to 17, but they had 48 on the scoreboard, so they get that changed. For the Lady Wildcats, their leading scorer with nine points is junior Ashara Hotstetler. Four points put in by Kiana Hotstetler. Two points put in by freshman Vivian Baker and two points by junior Autumn Baker, so they're only four with points. Either go by Hotstetler or Baker to round out their scoring. Taking a look at the scoring by the periods. Well, first period was one in favor of the Lady Indians, 30 to nine. They also won the second period, 17 to eight, as they lead 47 to 17 here at halftime. 
And taking a look quickly at the foul situation, a couple of players, that's Ashara Hotstedler and Macy Blavelt, both have two fouls apiece for the Lady Wildcats. They have a couple, three other players with one foul apiece. For the Lady Indians, Haley Hagen, the senior, senior Ashlyn Huff, and senior Kristen Jones, all three have two fouls apiece. And uh, Eddie has a single foul to her name. We're going to take another quick break and get you set for the second half of action. Don't forget, we do have another game coming up after this in our doubleheader here this evening. There are also games going on over at the middle school as they've got the number four seed with Harrisburg taking on the number eight seed and Father Tolton. That game tipped off at 6 o'clock just like ours did here. And then their nightcap will be number six, Fulton, taking on number seven, Fayette, in their second game of the evening for them. We're going to take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. Liberal Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in Jefferson City, Riverwell Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverwell Christian Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Uh -huh. I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We <laughs> love oh, we it. love it. But we're thinking about Tokyo. Uh -huh. I know a guy. You know an agent, too. It's Kathy Rush at Remax Jefferson City. Call her today at 573-761-3405. Hello, Blake Gazaway here with the Show Me Sports Network. I've had the opportunity to have some amazing calls, including overtime touchdowns, walk-off home runs, and buzzer-beating baskets. But I've answered another call. That's to serve my community as a volunteer firefighter. Stop and think what would happen if your home or property caught fire and no one was there to put it out. Every day, volunteer firefighters not only save lives and property, but also respond to other emergencies. Nearly two-thirds of our nation's fire departments are manned by volunteer firefighters. And because of this, we simply need Need more volunteers to step up and answer the call. Stop by or contact your local fire department and see how you can become a volunteer firefighter today. I answered the call to serve my community. Will you? Attention Indians fans, here's your chance to help the student-athletes of Hallsville by becoming a member of the Hallsville Athletic Boosters. Your gifts help provide all Hallsville athletes with a safe and positive experience while attending our school district and also help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Hallsville Athletic Boosters this season for as little as $25. Membership is open to everyone. Interested in joining? Look them up on Facebook by searching Hallsville Athletic Boosters or email them at HallsvilleAthleticBoosters at gmail.com. Let's go Indians! Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format, high powered lasers. With some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732 to find out more on custom laser engraving llc a veteran owned business both teams getting final instructions from their head coaches hallsville leads by 30 at 47 17 again hallsville trying to defend their title of champion of the 2021 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament, so they're looking to make it to the championship game. Again, this year, winner will play in the championship. Loser will play in the third-place game. Both of those on Saturday, third place at 1 o'clock, the championship game at 4. We'll have a boys game in there. We'll talk about that here a little bit later. As Hallsville will have the basketball, 30-point lead in effect for them as they'll go left to right on your Show Me Sports Network app or Media Center as Edding will have it. She'll drive along the baseline. Now she'll Kick it off to Hargis. Around the horn they'll go. Jones had it for a moment. 
She gives it off to Lucas, and that pass is going to go out of bounds, so it'll be a turnover for Hallsville, not what they wanted to do to start their first possession of the second half. He is walking it across the timeline. Was Kiana Hotstetler. She gives her pass off to Monette. Looking down low as that pass from Ashara Hotstetler goes out of bounds. Let her too much. Was looking down low for Kiana but could not connect the flight through. Jones will have it. Bounce pass gives it for a moment to Threrkeld. Now back to Jones. Her shot from the low post. Oh, no good. Cannot get that one to fall. Left it a little bit short. As Hotstedler has it here on the near side, her shot up no good. Rebound comes down into the hands of Edding. And she'll go the other way. It's one on two. She'll lay it up, lay it in. She's got 18 points in the game, and it's now 49-17 score. There's a three by Hotstedler. Good. Ashara's got 12 points of her own. That lead down 49-20 to as we played a minute 10 here in this third period of play. There's a three from Edding. That one good. She's got 21 points. It's starting to rain threes here in the second half of action. Kiana Hotstetler will have it. She'll slowly walk it across the timeline. Now she'll give a pass off to Monette on the far side. She'll give it to Vivian Baker out front. Now with it again is Hotstetler. Bounce pass far side to Ashara. There's another three up. Got that one. She's got back-to-back threes. 15 points in the game. It's 52-23, 6-14 and counting here in this third period of play. As with it is Edding, gives a cross-court pass to Jones. Her three up, in and out, no good. It breaks the streak of threes right there. As Ashara Hotstetler will have the basketball on the far side. Deanna Hotstetler, she'll take a three, couldn't make it in. Rebound comes down to Vivian Baker, goes back up with it. That one no good. Rebound comes down in the hands of Natalie Mitchell. She'll give it off to Jones, left wing, three, forthcoming, good. She's got 13 points, and a 30-second timeout will pause and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal. We're with you all the way. Thirty-second timeout called by Hallsville. There's going to be a stolen ball. Jones will get it on the other end. Shot up is up and good. She's got 15 points, and it's 57-23. There's a pass knocked out of the hands, but was able to go back and get it. Is Monette? There's a shot. That one up, no good by Vivian Baker. Rebound comes down to Jones. And she'll give a uh, cross-court pass over for a moment. And that was Lucas with it. Now Quintana will have it out front. She'll be hounded closely there by Hotstetler. I'll give it off free throw line to Mitchell. She'll kick it far side. Lucas three up. Banked it in. She's got her first points of the game. High off the backboard. Looked like she was going to arc over everything, but she called the banker beforehand, got that loan approved. It's a 60-23 to 23 ball game now. Out front will be Kiana Hotstetler out by center circle with it. She'll put her dribble down, slowly walk towards the far side. Now she'll pick up her dribble. There's a pass that's going to be off the face of Baker. As going the other way will be Mitchell. She'll lay it up, lay it in. The junior has got her first bucket. And it's 62-23. Hotstetler fires up another three. That's a Shara. That one no good goes out of bounds. We'll stay, or we'll go back to the uh, Lady Indians, rather. As Edding, Huff, Hargis. Eddie. And Thienen check in. Had to... Lost two of the players after they checked in. We're getting where they need to be on the court. 
Straight away with it will be Eddie. She'll give it off to Thienen. Eddie gets it back. Thienen with a three. That one missed everything. Goes out of bounds. We'll go back to the Lady Wildcats. 62-23 score. As we're under four minutes to play here, so halfway through this third period of action. Lady Indians leading. There's going to be a pass knocked out of the hands of Kiana Hotstetler. She gives it off to Ashara. Driving in along the baseline was Monette. Can't do anything with it. She'll give a bounce pass to Blavelt. She'll have a cross-court pass. There's a collision as Hotstetler and Hargis both collide. That'll be foul. First one on Hargis, first team foul. Hotstetler a little slow to get up, but she's going to say she's okay. Inbound is going to be knocked out of bounds by Edding. We'll stay with the Lady Wildcats. 3.36 left to go here in this third period of action. 62-23 the score. There's going to be a pass through the hands of Hotstetler. Edding will take it the other way. She'll stop, fire a shot up, got it to fall in. She's got 23 points, and it's 64-23. With it is Monette on the far side. She's going to have it knocked out of bounds, and it'll be a steal as Lady Indians will take it the other way. There's a shot up and good. I seen and she's got two points. 66-23 the scores. We're nearing three minutes to go here in this third period. Hotstetler will have it. That's Ashara out front. Now she'll work it far side. Now she'll give it off to Kiana Hotstetler. There's going to be a loose ball, still loose. It'll go out of bounds. They'll say last touched by the Lady Indians. So we'll stay with the Lady Wildcats. Natasha Jewell, the 5'7 freshman, checks in. Also checking in is Hannah Hackman. Kylie Peters has checked in. Autumn Baker also out there as well as Vivian Baker. That's their starting five out on the floor. There's going to be a pass taken away by Huff. She'll give it off to Edding. She dishes it. Shot up from the near side. No good. That shot up by Eddie. Rebound comes down. Going the other way with it are Lady Wildcats. That was a nice play for Edding to assist it. There's a three up near side. That one off. No good by Vivian Baker. Rebound will be saved, though, into the hands of Peters. There's a another long shot up by Monette, that one no good. Rebound comes down for Lady Indians. Edding with a three, far side, good. She's got 26 points, and it's 69-23, under two to go here in this third period. Almost another steal by Edding as she's hounding Hackman. She'll give a pass off far side to Baker. She'll try to drive in near side, picked up her dribble. Has to get rid of it, does so. Got it in the hands. Of Autumn Baker, and there's a whistle and a foul. That'll be just the second team foul. That one called on Kaylee Eddy, her second, team second. So five new in for the Indians, as well as Hagen checks in, also checking in Lucas, Jones, Quintana, and Threrkeld. All five check in. There's a shot up. Too strong by Jewel. Rebound comes down for the Lady Indians as they lead 69-23. Left wing with it. Lucas three up. In and out no good. As rebound will come down to Vivian Baker. She'll give it off to Autumn Baker. She'll dribble around traffic. Give it back to Vivian as she'll try to work in. Almost lost the dribble. Got it to Autumn. She'll step over. Fire up along too good. She's got four points. It's 69-25, a minute 10 left here in regulation. There's a three by Jones. That one no good. Rebound knocked into the hands of Autumn Baker, so she will take it the other way. She is hounded straight away. It's going to be a ball taken away as Jones will get it. 
Hagen has it on the far side. Turnaround, left-hander no good. Second effort, that one goes in. Took her two tries, but she got it. She's got double digits with 10. It's 71-25 in favor of Lady Indians. Clock under 30 seconds to go here in this third period. With it, driving in. Shot up, no good. That one by Vivian Baker. Offensive put back up and good by her. She's got four points. 15 on the clock as it continues to roll down. As Jones will have it. Now Lucas on the far side, back to Jones. She'll get a screen set. She'll drive in. Lost the handle. Kicks it for Quintana. Her three up, no good. And that'll take us after three periods of play. It is... 71-27 in favor of the Lady Indians. We'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others. Drive safely and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled, offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your last line of defense. The so Lady Wildcats will have the basketball to start the fourth and final period in regulation as they trail 71-27. With it is Kiana Hotstetler. She gives her pass off to Ashara Hotstetler and a whistle and a foul. That'll be an inbound. That foul. Called on Rachel Hargis. That'll be her second. Team third, so an inbound here. Underneath their own buckets. Uh, for underneath their own bucket for Lady Wildcats. Inbound will go in. Shot up was blocked. However, we're going to have a foul. That one called on Hargis. Back-to-back fouls on her. Her third team fourth is at the free throw line. Will be... Ashara Hotstetler, she has 15 points. First time she's been at the free throw line tonight. First free throw up, got it to rattle in. So she's got a second one coming. That one up, also rattled that one in. So she's got 17, makes it a 71-29 ball game. Hopefully you're enjoying tonight's broadcast as we're just shy of 7 o'clock here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gasway uh, Gas here with you. Shot up, no good. Offensive put back by Mitchell. That one rolls in. She missed it the first time but got it to go the second time. Now 73-29 the score. As pass on the far side for it was Baker. Shot up and good. That one by Kiana Hotstetler. She's got six points. Makes it a 73-29 ball game. Trying to drive in with it is Eddie. Lost the dribble, goes out of bounds. So we'll go back to the Lady Wildcats. And hopefully you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. Here on the Show Me Sports Network, we... It's our pleasure bringing you coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Tournament. That's shot up by Ashara Hotstetler. Is good. She's got two more. It makes it a 40-point lead at 74-33. With it is Eddie. She'll leave it on the far side for Hargis, trying to drive her way in. Give it back to Eddie straight away. And there's a pass off line, but got it in the hands of Thenan. She'll dribble around. Dish it off for Eddie. Now she'll work it near side. Give it to Huff. She drives in. Left-hander is going to be swatted, taken away by 
Ashara Hotstetler, and she'll give it off to Kiana Hotstetler. Cross court pass over to Blavelt, and she'll put the right hand dribble down, bounce pass to Monette. Shot from the far side, no good. Second effort goes in. She got her offensive rebound, puts it up as we're under five to play, makes it 73 to 35. With it, he is Hargis. She'll put the right-hand dribble to work here on the near side. Now give it straight away to Theonin. Now she'll give it back to Hargis. Nice spin move, trying to work her way in. She throws that up, not there. Rebound comes down. There's a shot up. In and out, no good. Rebound is going to be stripped out of the hands and into the hands of Huff. There's a three far side up. Good. That one up and in by Eddie. She's got her first points of the game. We have another quick timeout, so we'll take a quick break. And actually, we'll just keep it right here. They're just calling a timeout for subs. 76-35 the score in favor of the Lady Indians over the Lady Wildcats as we're halfway through this fourth period of regulation. With the basketball will be Hackman. She'll give it off to Autumn Baker, who has it on the far side. Now straight away with it will be Vivian Baker. She's in the paint, and she walked with it. Was going to try to go in and go up with it, but could not get past the traffic. So inbound for the Lady Indians, 324 and counting here in the ball game. As out by center circle with it is Hargis. She'll give it off to Quintana. Now Hagen has it, was looking down low and over missed everybody. So we'll go back to Lady Wildcats. They do trail, 76-35, three minutes to go, looking for a give and go for Hackman as she... Falls down out of bounds, cannot get the basketball. So it goes back for the Lady Indians. Eddie will have it out in center circle. She'll give it off to Quintana. She drives in, left-hander up and good. She's got seven points. It's 76-35 in favor of the Lady Indians. Lady Wildcats with the basketball. Autumn Baker has it out front. Under two and a half to go here in regulation. With it is Vivian Baker. She'll stand with the ball above her head. Now she'll put the left-hand dribble down. Drive in, shot up, good. She's got six points. And it's now 78-37. There's going to be a travel as Eddie travels with it. Was looking to get a shot up. Maybe make a pass. Either way, she drug her feet. The Lady Wildcats have the basketball. Minute 45 and counting here as that pass goes through the hands of Vivian Baker, so we'll go back the other way. Lady Indians of Hallsville are going to move on to the championship game on Saturday. They didn't have to go here in regulation. Quintana will have it. Pass on the far side. There's a three up. Got it to fall in. That was Eddie. She's got six points with two trays. Both coming in this fourth period of play. It's 81-37. Hackman had it for a moment. She'll give it off to Peters. Peters leaves it for Baker. Now Vivian Baker with it. She'll try to drive in right-hander up. The hook is good. She's got eight points. As we're under 60 to go here in regulation, 81-39 the score. Quintana had it. She'll give it off to Eddie. Back to Quintana. She'll put the uh, dribble down. Kick it for Lucas. She fires up a three. No good. Quintana gets the rebound. She goes up with it. That one won't fall. Rebound the third time through. That one no good by Thurkeld. And rebound comes the other way for the Lady Wildcats. And they turn it over as Autumn Baker couldn't get the handle on it. She turns it over as clock continuing to wind down as we're near 20 
seconds to go here in regulation. As with it is Quintana. She'll have the ball poked into backcourt. She'll go back and get it. Under 10 seconds to go. She'll give a pass off to Lucas in front court. Back to Quintana. Four on the clock. Three, two, one. And that will take us to a final of our final score. The Hallsville Lady Indians 81 and the Osage County Lynn Lady Wildcats 39. We're going to take a uh, quick break and do our postgame show and get you set for the second half of our doubleheader as you're listening to exclusive coverage from the 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. Live beautifully with Avon. As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Swinigan and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Swanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you've earned. The law offices of Russ Swanigan. Well, we know at least what part of the bracket will look like for the games on Saturday as the... Hallsville Lady Indians victorious 81 to 39 over the Osage County Lynn Lady Wildcats. Taking a look at your scoring summary. Leading all scorers for the Lady Indians with 26 points, junior Avery Edding. 15 points put in by senior Kristen Jones. 10 points put in by senior Haley Hagen. 7 points put in by senior Chloe Quintana. 6 points by senior Kaylee Eddy. Four points put in by junior Natalie Mitchell. Did miss six points put in by Ashlyn Huff. Three points put in by senior Madison Lucas. And two points by sophomore Peyton Theonin to round out their scoring. Taking a look at the scoring summary for Lady Wildcats. Their leading scorer with 19 points was Ashara Hotstetler. Eight points put in by Vivian Baker. Six points put in by freshman Kiana Hotstetler. Four points by junior Autumn Baker and two points by senior Ellie Monet to round out their scoring. So that moves the uh, Hallsville Lady Indians into the championship game as they try to defend their championship from last year as they will move on to the championship round for the... Uh, Number five seed, that's Osage County, Lynn, the Lady Wildcats. They will play in the third place game. That'll be on Saturday. That's going to do it for our broadcast here. As for the Show Me Sports Network, I'm Blake Gasaway. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the broadcast here. We're going to take about a 15-minute break or so and then be back and get you set for our nightcap as you're listening to exclusive coverage of... The 2022 Harrisburg Basketball Tournament here on the Show Me Sports Network. Until we talk to you here in about 15 minutes, so long and have a great evening. You've been listening to the biggest and absolute best game coverage in mid-Missouri on the exclusive home for local high school basketball, the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gazaway and the broadcast crew are the ones that know your team the best. Exclusive coverage of local high school basketball has been brought to you by Avon with Michelle Carty, Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Eddie Goodell Society, Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC. Kathy Rush, Remax Realty. Last Sentinel Firearms. River Oak Christian Academy. Sawdust Studios. Law Offices of Russ Swanigan. Southwest Dental Care. And State Tech of Missouri. 
We hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. Join us anytime on the web at showmesportsnetwork.com or find us on Facebook by searching the Show Me Sports... Serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world, this is the Show Me Sports Network. The preceding was an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and was a high-fidelity all-digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyrighted by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. 